I let the dogs out. I've been spending money again. I bought myself a workbench, uh, Vida XL. Uh, they're a Dutch company, I think, and they serve most of Europe and Australia, but I don't think they ship to the States. Now, the reason I went for this is um, <laughs> it was basically one of the cheapest, although it was half price, according to their website. I paid uh, £86, uh, but as it's their own brand, they may be playing fast and loose with their prices, I don't know. But uh, the reason I went for this in particular, for around that price, you pretty much get that most of the benches look the same. They have two vices, they have a service, they have um, dogs. Uh, this one had a well at the back. I don't know whether they all have a, a well. Um, it has a, a drawer and a shelf underneath. Um, so it has pretty much what you want in a bench. But the reason that's, the thing that set this apart is it was a good deal heavier than some of its competitors, almost twice as heavy as, uh, as one of its uh, competitors. This is about 20 kilos, um, which sounds like a good weight to me. I have my doubts as to how sturdy it is. I could have gone the route of making my own bench. But the thing is, after I bought all the wood and bought two vices, and various other bits, uh, draw um, runners and things like this. I have my doubts as to whether I could have built it for, for that sort of money. I'd have ended up with something a lot more sturdy and a lot heavier. Uh, but whether or not I'd have paid any less, I'm, I, I have my doubts really. So I, I think this is probably a good, good starting point. Now I'm going to be building it on top of my workmate, just save my back, save leaning over. Obviously the workmate's going to go. This is a very small conservatory that I'm doing this in. Eventually this will be going in my garage, which will be my workshop, but it's the middle of winter, um, the garage isn't heated, and it's nice and warm in here. So, so here it will be staying for the next few months, and just hope I can get around it, because I think it's going to pretty much fill the conservatory. So let's get it open. I thought I'd taken all the tape off. Oh, there we go. Yes, I have. There we go. Right. Cardboard. No instructions. Yeah, instructions. Right. Instructions. There's not really much to the instructions. They're, they're just pictures. So there's an inventory list, which I'll, I'll just check now as I unpack it all. Um, but I'm going to put myself on the stopwatch and see how long this takes to build. So, start. Let's go. Right, we've got the two. That's the that's the shelf and that's the drawer. One each of those. Oops. Box of components. Oh, I should have got a knife out still. Knife. I already feel that I'm rushing this, which is something I don't really want to do, but I am curious to know how quickly this can be set up. Ah, a vice. Component K. All the components are marked, which is good. That is component K. So there's no doubt as to what's what. Oh, and there should be two of those vices. Yes, there's no one here. Another vice and some dogs. All very well made. Hardware. And again, the hardware's all marked, so this is good. There's, yeah, A, C, E, B, D. Certainly looks like it's all there. 
four screws, more bolts. There should be four of those screws, yep. Yeah. Some washers and some threaded inserts. Four threaded inserts. And let's see the washers, there we go, washers. Four washers. And there should be another four washers somewhere. Yeah. So, looks like all the hardware's there. Although I only see three small washers. No, nope, there are four. There we go. That looks like a complete set of hardware. We have. Right, apparently these legs are different. Yeah. There's a front. Uh, that's the front and that's going to be the right hand leg as you're looking at it, I think. And another leg, oh it's marked anyway, it's marked as D. And this one must be marked as B, front, yes. Right, I think this is idiot proof, famous last words. Draw front J. So I'm going to take everything out. Side of the drawer G. Uh, a rail F. Two F rails. But they are actually Im mirror images. They're both marked F, but they're not the same. They're mirror. That's okay. Draw front, G. Draw side, G. One of those. Yep. Is that a leg? A. That'll be a cross. Hmm. <laughs> Don't know what those are. A. But if they're A, maybe they're early in the construction process. Oh, top of my head's cut off. And another bit of a drawer, H. Okay. And that clearly is the top of the workbench. Not incredibly thick, it's it's about yay thick. It's uh, effectively hollow. But it's, uh, well to be fair, the top is the th same thickness as the top of my workmate, which has never particularly bothered me. And this is braced, so it should be fairly rigid. I guess it's okay. Lots and lots of... Uh, individual bits of wood. I guess it's all hardwood. Bit of three ply on the bottom of the well. I guess that might be what's referred to as half inch timber. Yeah, 15 millimeters is the thickness of the top. And of the sides. As you can hear, that's three ply or uh, three, five ply, plywood, three ply. Whew, right. We're there. There are threaded inserts for the vise already. Ooh. So that bit of the construction's been done. Another vise on the end. So. It's such a tight space to be doing this in. So we have a bench, we have a well. Nice feature is at this end there's a little ramp so that you can uh, presumably so you can get your tools out easily. Um, yeah, first impressions seem it seem quite good. Very smooth finish. Oh there are there are some undulations in the top. 
it's not actually flat. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. The top's got a ridge down the middle, which isn't ideal. But I guess I could just plane that down, I suppose. Well, okay. It's about it's about a millimetre out. Is that because the wood's moved or because the way it's been braced? Hmm. Yeah, I think it's fault of manufacturer. Okay, so apart from that, initial impressions quite good. Step one. It's putting the cross members on the base by the looks of things. So that's D. It's not that. Need B. Two A's. And some hardware. Two A's, two B's, and two C's. Okay, so we have a threaded insert bolt washer. And a big screwdriver. wondering whether I should go back over this later and glue everything. It might be handy to be able to disassemble it. That feels suspiciously like the screws bottomed out. No, that's okay. Not with that. <laughs> the downside of doing things on top of the workbench. One of the nice things about this having a well on this workbench is that uh, I won't be dropping stuff on the floor anymore, hopefully. It's the real downside of a, a workmate, so I'm already always losing stuff. Inserts could fit a bit tighter. Not convinced these are going to be particularly tight joints. Everything seems a little bit loose. But maybe it screws up fairly tightly. As long as everything's square. I'm wondering whether I'm going to retrofit braces on it and stuff like that. Anyway.
Step one. Step two, and I'm guessing also step three, because they're really the same thing, is just to complete this section. See? And that's the top, because that's got a finish on it, and the underside is rough, but still finished. That's smooth. So, does it matter which way round this goes? this might be time to lose the work mate but we'll see that's step two hello and step three is simply doing Need some hardware there. I'm going to put the hardware on the floor. My impression so far are things are labelled much better than IKEA furniture. Flat pack, everybody always draws the comparisons with IKEA, don't they? But I've had trouble with IKEA in the past identifying the uh, assembly hardware. And that's step three. So far, so good. <laughs> have I just... I have. I've put the shelf on upside down. Does this matter? I think this is... Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Which way's up? That way's up. That's up. I've got the shelf upside down. <laughs> I'm going to change it. <laughs> I've burned 15 minutes so far, but I'm going to get this right. I've got the, un the unfinished side of the shelf upwards. And have I? Oh, does it really matter? Yeah, that, that, that's the, the, I'm going to, I'm going to flip this over. That is step three now, properly completed with the right side of the shelf upwards. Step four appears to be attaching the drawer runners to the top of the bench. Did I say top? The underside of the bench. So, we need four bits of D hardware, the screws, or they bolts. D. We need part E, which is the top of the bench, and we need the two F's, which are not the same component, they are mirror images of each other. So it would appear that the runner goes at the front. That's curious. So we've got a block of wood here and a hole in the rear of the chassis. Right, I think they go that way. I'm guessing that the screws go right down inside the wood. There's, there's, a, there's a big hole on that side and a little hole on that side, so I'm guessing that the big hole is upwards. 
which is what they're illustrating in the, in the drawing. So I believe those are in the right place now. There. Okay, I think we have a problem. Okay, I think this has been drilled incorrectly. I think the holes are a little bit too close this way. I hope I'm wrong. I don't think I am. I'm not quite sure how they managed to do this, but it looks like the holes into which the screws have got to fit are five millimetres too far this way. I'll screw the rear ones in and I guess I'll just get my drill out and drill some new pilot holes. Okay, change of plan. The next step is to put the top on the legs. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and build the drawer because the fact that these holes are in the wrong place, I hope they're just in the wrong place that way. If they're in the wrong place that way, if I screw these on, I might not be able to get the drawer in. So I'm going to assemble the drawer and then I can play around with the fit of the runners. Ah, that's a shame. Right. Step seven, the drawers. Hmm. And they don't need any extra hardware, apparently. G, G, and an H, and I'll eventually need a J for the next step. Okay. These are sort of snap together arrangement, which uh, don't seem to want to snap together. There's so, some sort of screw latch thing going on here. Right. There we go. You see that? That just fits in there. And then we give it a tighten. And that's all that is. And then we do the same. That. So we have to open the open the latch up. So keen on together. There we go. Hmm. Seems very non-keen on 
just lock them together. It's trying to... Ah! Fiddly. As I was tightening it, it was trying to move the drawer side or back forwards, which I'm surprised it was able to do. I think the secret here is to make sure you only turn it a quarter of a turn. <laughs> Hang on, which way around am I supposed to have this? I'm completely confused now. Right, it's going in there. Oh, try that again. No. As I try to turn the latch... Oh, has that, has that worked? Yeah, I would have preferred screws and bolts the same as the others. Okay, that appears to have worked. Right, step eight is the bottom of the drawer. Again, there is a top and a bottom, and that's the top. A little bit square. That seems to have fixed. Okay. And step nine is the draw front J, which goes on that way. Nice bit, nice bit of wood. Nice finish. I'm not happy about these catches. I've never seen these before. They're capped to the nuts, but yeah, it, it's produced a sturdy draw. But well, I say sturdy. I'm very tempted to uh, glue and screw those, you know. Right. What I'm now going to do. Draw an upside down. Just to make sure that we're hundred percent on the alignment of the of the drawers. My brad all isn't long enough to reach through. So it's time to improvise. I'm just using a drill here as a centre punch. This is not going to be the one that I used to drill the pilot hole. As you can see, this is the this is where the drill punched, and I think I'm going to drill it. 
going to put the pilot hole just there, just a millimetre wider. And the same over here. There's where the punch made the hole. So there's no way I could have screwed into that hole. So I'm going to put a hole there. hole there. The pilot holes are drilled all the way through and they appear to be, was it three and a half millimetres? Yeah, they appear to be three and a half millimetres. So let's re-drill them. Yeah. Right. Oh, well that's seated solidly anyway. So, they're on firmly. I'm just going to check. <laughs> that last bit wasn't on stopwatch. I'm now 36 minutes in, but I forgot to restart the stopwatch after I just uh, repositioned the camera. So back to step five, which is simply putting the top on. And this involves four bolts and four washers. There appear to be threaded inserts, so these better be in the right place or we're going to be in trouble. Ah, but there's this play. The, uh, the holes that the bolts go through are um, elongated so it doesn't actually matter too much if they, they don't line up exactly as long as they line up this way which eyeballing it suggests they do so Do I keep it up the right way, or do I turn the whole thing upside down? Let's try screwing it on upside down. <gasps> Some play in the legs. So I was having difficulty locating the, the threaded insert because the legs were splayed very slightly. Well, having got two bolts in, the others should be a lot easier to find. Yes. Dum de dum. Forty minutes so far. <laughs> I'm getting hot. This is ridiculous. Oh, 
Uh, very small criticism of the bolts they've used to put the top on. They're Phillips and unless you're bearing down hard on them you can't get any purchase. If they were slot head I could tighten them up really quite well but I'm not going to be able to tighten this up properly upside down. I'm not sure whether Phillips is the correct term, they are crosshead screwdriver, uh, crosshead bolts. And when I put the, uh, apply any pressure with the screwdriver, the screwdriver just tries to come out of the bolt. I'm in danger of stripping the heads. Okay. That's as tight as I'm going to get it without turning it upside down and putting my full body weight against against the, uh, the crosshead screws bolts. Okay. Where's the draw go? One draw. Stage ten was actually the draw putting the drawer in. Stage 11, the vices. And I think these just go in and wind in. Holes upwards, because you can put dogs in there and clamp stuff on the top of the work workbench. There we go, that's pretty easy. Yeah, I might take the label off later. No, that's going to leave a horrible sticky mess. No. That'll be a job for later, clearing up the sticky mess that the labels have left. There's a little bit of play in the vice, but... even though it's a bit wobbly. Right, put the other one on. That's the other vice fitted. So, step 12 just appears to be getting the dogs out. And I'm not going to start singing Who Let the Dogs Out. I let the dogs out. <laughs> well, they're a bit, a bit tight. Those are plastic dogs, and these are wooden, and these are the ones that go here to support work that's being clamped in this vise here. Although how you clamp something that's quite big, I guess you only use the end of the vise. Hmm. That's interesting. The, the drawer sticks proud. I 
I'm wondering whether it was actually the the inserts in the draw rails that were drilled in the wrong place. I couldn't move, given the, where the, uh, the inserts were, I couldn't move them back. I can't move a big 8mm hole or whatever it was back 5mm. But this drawer is sticking proud and I would have thought it's essential to have this flat with the, with the top. So I think that's one almighty... I, I, couldn't, I couldn't move the, um, the holes back on the rear one because I'd be, try, I'd be screwing into plywood, into thin plywood, and that, that wouldn't work. There's no way you could have a piece of work sported there bearing against that drawer while it's clamped. That drawer needs to be recessed back further. Oh dear. There is a happy solution to our draw problem. The, we, we, we are very limited in how we can position the, the draw runners because we're, I'm not even sure you can see this, we're having to screw into the rail down here so we can't move the holes back and because we've got these large holes in the runners it's very difficult to bore another hole right next to it without destroying the, the strength of it. However, there is a happy solution. We need to move the drawer back a centimetre and there are extra holes. No, there aren't. Oh, no. We can move this rail back easily because we just move it along one hole. Unfortunately, for these, we'll have to re-drill. Well, that's not too bad. <laughs> they, they, they've drilled, they've used different screw positions. On this one, we just unscrew it and move it back. But on this one, we're going to have to drill some extra holes so that we can move it back into the new hole. So I will, oh right, okay, I've got all my stuff here. I will drill new pilot holes there, there, and there. And then here the screws will move back in the wood and here the, the screws will stay where they are and the frame will move back. This is a little bit inconsistent in its construction. So that's that rail done. Right, so I've re-drilled the holes, now I just move the whole thing back and notch to match the other side. I know of no dignified way of filming me reattach these runners to the base while everything's upside down. So, see you in a bit. And we're there. The drawer now works as it should and is nicely recessed and doesn't get in the way of anything clamped in the vise. Phew. Um, I still have the matter of the slightly bowed top. Um, you can really feel it. it. It may be that a couple of uh, planks in the top have expanded a little bit. You, it's, it seems to be down to this, well it's a few of them actually. Uh, these two are a bit 
different types of wood. I don't currently own a jointing plane and I need to go and get one, a nice big number six or number seven, uh, probably a number seven. And when I've got that, I, I will plane the top and get it absolutely flat because that will definitely help me. But apart from that, and apart from a slight ricketiness of the bench, which may be fixable with braces, try and get the old triangles on the legs. Um, this seems to be, for the price, quite a nice bench. And it's certainly an upgrade on a Workmate. Gives me a lot more options and a nice worktop to work on. And I like the feature of the well at the back. I'll probably do a video later after I've had a chance to use it a bit. And I might um, do a few fiddling with it, and braces and planing and stuff. So tune back later. Uh, if you like this, click like. Um, subscribe so you get get the updates on this, other woodworking things, um, mostly guitar orientated. I'm going to be building guitars. And uh, yeah, see you again. Thanks for watching.